Hello again. Welcome back to the kitchen table. Um, another uh, su subscriber requested uh, video today, which is all about preventative maintenance and checks that you can do um, on your vision to keep it in tip top condition. Um, now, when there, there is a sticky thread on the vision section of phantompilots.com about this, and when I first sort of uh, suggested doing a uh, doing preventative maintenance or checklisting, I had uh, I had a couple of couple of interesting flame postings from people who said, "Hey, dude, you're taking it far too serious, man. It's not like you're taking off in a 747." Sorry, they were American, just in case the accent wasn't right. Uh, and I said, uh, my answer then was, "Look." To you, this may not be a significant investment. To me, it is. And if I discovered that it plummeted to earth and shattered into a million pieces due to something I could have preempted, I'd feel pretty bad. So, for those of you who um, who who you know got thousands of dollars lying around and have ten of these, and it's not an issue, um, rather than flame in the comments and tell me that it's all far too serious, if you could just look to your right over here, there's probably some lovely kitten videos that have been suggested. So if you want to go over and look at those. Okay, good. So, um, and by the way, this evening's medicinal uh, is, a, is a very nice uh, Rioja. So cheers. Mm. So yeah, I suggested that either before or after, I tend to do it after, to be honest. After every flight, there are a few basic things that, that, that you should be checking. Um, one is the condition of your props. Um, obviously just running a a finger down the leading and trailing edges will, will highlight any major chips. The other area of weakness is going to be here. And already we had one um, uh, forum member who discovered by doing a bit of a flex test, a hairline crack. So again, just worth putting a little bit of stress there around the hub and seeing if everything's okay. So I always tend to check after each flight. That way, if I find something, I can fix it. I'm not at the flying field. I haven't got to go, oh, you know, I've got to go back home. But whatever works for you. So props is a good one. The other thing is simple motor checks. Do they all spin nice and freely? Are they making any odd noises? Uh, the other one is to check for any play up, down, horizontal. They shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to feel any, any movement. That is a sign that the bearings might be in trouble if you can. The other thing that I do after every flight is just check the security of anything that I've added, like the fly tracks is secure, the camera mounts are secured. Normally I have some little thin cable ties here. Uh, I've taken those off in anticipation of fitting a certain two axis brushless gimbal that is still stuck in customs here in the UK, but never mind. Uh, and just a general inspection as well. Any cracks, any obvious damage. And that's pretty good enough. Um, <clears throat> And then on a slightly more regular basis, I would do things like check the tightness of all the uh, screws because, you know, vibration is going to loosen things off over time. Just check and tighten, especially the motor screws um, and do a sort of a, a bit more of a thorough check of the shell and make sure everything's uh, OK there. And less often, but still probably once a month or more often, depending if I had lots of flight, I like to take the top off. And have a look inside. Now I've already done a video about that. I'll put a link down here to that one to show how it's how you do it. So I'm not going to go through that, and I've already re removed the um, the screws on this one ready. But just to reiterate, the tools you'll need for that is a two mil, um, a two mil hex driver. This isn't a very expensive one, but it's a good one. It's got nice sharp, clean edges. I'm not going to strip any screws. And also, people have reported problems with there are four little Phillips crosshead type screws on each arm. People have sort of reported stripping those. I would the DJI screwdriver that they provide in the, in the case does not fit. Don't use it. Don't even try. I would recommend buying yourself a fairly reasonable quality Phillips double O size or similar. Um, this is called a strength and tip screwdriver, and you're not going to have any problems stripping threads. So let's um, let's open her up and have a look, shall we? Now I've got. A fly treks in here, which I'm just going to disconnect because we don't want that getting in the way. And let's move the shell down here. And we can keep an eye on things. Let's tip her up so we can have a look. So this is the inside of the beast. So what I like to do 
And again, I'm not going to do it now because it's a little bit awkward showing it for the camera. I like to give the thing a good rattle and a, and a shake about because, you know, I want to see, is there any rubbish in here, any foreign objects, or maybe something's fallen off, rattling around in there. If there's any crap that's come through the vents, um, blow it out, a bit of canned air or, you know, whatever. Um, and then it's a general visual, you know, we want to be checking things like everywhere there's a plug connector that is attaching something to the board or out, you want to be checking that they are seated nicely. Here's my Flytrex cable, that doesn't, that won't come in yours unless you fitted one, so don't get too, um, too worried about that one. Um, you've got plugs here, here, you've got these ones that actually come into the flight controller, this is the Visions NASA, again here, and here, and here, and into the receiver here and here. So it's just checking that everything's seated properly. You also want to be looking at your solder joints. You can take a take a screwdriver and just give a little give a little pressure on those and make sure that they're all still, you know, really secure. That we've not got any joints that are literally just hanging on by uh, by a, by a thread. Um, and we're looking for anything that's unusual, any crimping of wires, anything that's been caught or bent, and things like that. Things that we can you know we can catch early and preempt. The other thing that I like to do every so often, and you know your your uh, timing on that is is down to you really, but I like to check, and I've undone the four motor screws on this one to show you. Hopefully we can get that there. There is a little E clip or a sir clip. I don't know if we can see that, that holds that shaft in place. Sometimes these have been known to let go, come off and end up flying around inside, shorting things out. There's also a, a brass spacer in there that has also done damage on some aircraft. So I just like to visually inspect that those clips are in absolutely tight, solid, there's no wiggle room and again it's a good time to check that you know the motors are all running free so that's what i like to do i've seen some videos where i think the original phantoms people have been able to loosen the the motors with the shell still on and sort of pulled these wires out and sort of gone like this that they're not long enough in the vision i really wouldn't recommend you do that um you know, it's up to you of course but and that's kind of that's kind of it you it's it's no more complicated than that. It's just a few minutes spent checking that there isn't anything that's starting to be a problem that you can um, that you could actually sort of head off at the pass and save yourself a lot of money in repair bills. Um, and for those who are interested, this is as I said, this is the this is the flight controller, the NASA. Uh, the receiver is down there. The little subboard. These are obviously your speed controllers. All four arms. You've got the cabling for the um, antennas here, and you've also got uh, plugs for the camera, um, data, and various bits and pieces uh, down here in these data pins there. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. It's not. It's not not an amazingly difficult thing. It doesn't involve you know. Multi well, certainly not for me. I'm no, as you know, by now. I'm no um, engineering expert or electronics wizard, so it doesn't involve me getting out multimeters and doing all sorts of stuff. It's just really having a little look under the hood at what's going on in here with all the vibrations that have been happening. Is there anything that I need to worry myself about? And so far I haven't found anything, but for the want of a check of a circlip that was loose, um, you know, this motor giving way in flight, the circuit going up onto the magnets and stopping and me spiraling to a very expensive crash. Personally, I think it's worth it. Your mileage may vary, um, but yeah. So I hope that's proved useful to the people who asked for more detail. As I say, I'll put a link in the description to the, to the thread on Phantom Pilot. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully the next video will be me showing you around my new Rotopixel gimbal, but I don't know at the moment, Friday at the earliest, I think it's gonna get here, possibly not until after the weekend. There are a few other people who've got theirs and they've started to post some video up as well. So uh, yeah, thanks very much uh, again for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.